While Elizabeth was a resident of the orphanage, she made up her mind that she wanted to start a big family with at least three small children. After what had occurred to her, she dreamed of a future with her future spouse where they would treasure and never leave their children. Unbeknownst to Elizabeth, her biological parents left her when she was a baby, found wrapped in a sheet in a park on a cold fall day. She lived out her formative years at a local shelter, which was rescued by a kind old lady. Elizabeth had to face the fact that tuition was expensive and that she needed money for food, shelter, and clothing after finishing school. Taking a job as a waitress at a cafe with enough salary allowed her to put off her study for the time being. A tall, dashing man in a suit who often gazed in her direction was one of several attractive young men she encountered there. The shared interest was picked up by Elizabeth's co-worker Emma. Don't be shy, she winked at Elizabeth, encouraging her. He obviously likes you, I'm not so sure, Elizabeth responded with some hesitation. I don't think I'm his type. Try it out and see what happens, Emma smiled and retorted. Remember to return his smile the next time. Imagine if he asked you out on a date. Elizabeth listened to her friend's advice and offered him a smile when she served him coffee. They locked gazes, and he spoke up without delay, his eyes a captivating shade of black like coals. When I asked him, what have you planned for after work today? He smilingly asked. Nothing, Elizabeth responded, seemingly taken aback, just going home, might we go out sometime tonight? Maybe about 10 o'clock? He suggested getting off at 11. Despite Elizabeth's acceptance of the inevitable failure of the situation, she couldn't help but agree. She slowly exhaled and responded, absolutely. Later that night, they went for a stroll in the moonlight. They chatted and laughed, and Elizabeth felt comfortable around Thomas. Thomas was already the head of a department at a big corporation at the age of 25. But it didn't appear like their social position was an issue between them. Elizabeth fell head over heels for him the moment she laid eyes on him. And he couldn't care less about her job. Elizabeth was overjoyed because she realized it was a serious invitation to meet Thomas's mother at his home. But when they arrived to Thomas's apartment, they were met with an unexpected surprise. A small child ran out into the hallway, shouting, Daddy, with delight, Thomas, who was laughing and levitating, kissed her on the cheek as she extended her arm to him. This is my daughter, Katie, Thomas remarked with a slight smile. Will this be your daughter? What happened to her mom? Someone had lied to Elizabeth. Simply said, she ran off, was Thomas's reply. Things kept getting in the way of our marriage plans. We waited till after Evelyn gave birth to avoid her having a pregnant belly once she got pregnant. However, she departed following the birth of Katie. I guess I wasn't exactly her prince charming. Somebody else was the one she was waiting for. To me, you look like a prince, Elizabeth said with a smile, and your daughter is no obstacle for us. Thomas confessed, embracing and kissing Katie when she stood by his side, taking an interest in the strange woman. Honey, I'm so glad to hear that, Katie said. Elizabeth was completely unafraid, despite her initial bewilderment. Kneeling down, she tenderly stroked the young girl's head, with a friendly grin. She said, hi, honey, to the girl, I didn't hear about you from daddy, tomorrow, I will bring you a doll, for the time being, here is a chocolate bar, a delectable surprise was removed from Elizabeth's handbag, Lydia, Thomas's mother, watched them from the room, because of her sympathetic nature, Lydia warmed up to her son's new partner, a strong link formed between her and her granddaughter, and Thomas's love for her was evident. Lydia ended the event by saying, My darling, I'm really happy we met. I'm glad too, Elizabeth responded with a smile. The Thomas family was won over by Elizabeth in this way. Their marriage was solemnized six months later. Elizabeth, that is all. After the wedding, Emma told her, Now you can live your life without holding back. The flat is large, and your husband is rich. Having a baby is something you should consider doing soon. I'm guessing you're going to leave the cafe right now. No, not just yet, Elizabeth responded. I can't live on just this money. And we haven't discussed it. Indeed, Emma pondered, Thomas has a high income. I thought you two had a shared budget or something. A shared budget does exist between us. 
Thomas takes care of all the bills around the house and even my personal ones. I simply didn't feel at ease inquiring about anything else. Just hang in there, Emma reassured her. Although Elizabeth thought this counsel was strange, she ultimately chose to keep out of other people's lives. The family's finances were in good shape, and things were running well. Throughout the day, Lydia took care of her granddaughter, and in the evenings, Elizabeth would come home from work. Mama, as she dashed to Elizabeth, Katie yelled out with delight. Elizabeth gave the girl a warm embrace. Curling up to Katie, she said, my daughter, while laughing. After Thomas got home from work, the whole family would get together for supper and become very close. When Lydia learned that her son had finally found a respectable woman, she was elated. Elizabeth started giving Thomas considerable consideration about starting a family after a year had gone by. She told her spouse about it. This isn't the right time. Elizabeth, he sobbed, I'm grieving the loss of my late wife. Dealing with challenges at work and having another child means higher costs. Why not wait an additional six months? All right, honey, Elizabeth said, on their day off. A few days later, there was a knock at their door. Katie was assisting her mother. While Elizabeth was in the kitchen, I'm coming, said Thomas to his wife as he answered the door. Did someone want to come over for pie? Then Elizabeth heard Thomas, out in the corridor, shout in shock, look who's at the door, he added, gesturing bewilderingly to the huge basket he was holding tightly. What's in there? A gift? Grinning, Elizabeth looked into the basket. Her smile quickly disappeared from her face. The girl's spouse appeared equally astonished. There are two babies in the basket, he stated. The infants were grinning while they slept soundly. There was a note on top of the blanket that covered them. With a troubled brow, Thomas gave his wife the note. On a piece of notebook paper, the words, Thomas, forgive me for this act, but I have no one else to turn to, were scrawled in simple handwriting. I'm in a challenging circumstance right now. I have to travel abroad immediately, but I can't bring my kids. I'm confident you'll comply with my request. Permit my kids to live with you for a period of six months. Later, I'll pick them up, Thomas yelled. She's got some nerve, with anger. Is she now giving me her offspring annually? Much like kittens? My God, the babies are so adorable, Elizabeth moaned. Glancing at them, how old are they? Thomas grimly replied, looking at the baby's birth certificates that were also in the basket. They're each a month old, he said, and it says, unknown, in the father's column. How ought we to handle them? Do we need to contact the police? Elizabeth halted him with a, wait, they must be changed, they're ravenous and on the move already. We need to acquire some food for them. Head to the pharmacy. What are you talking about? Elizabeth? The babies stirred and cried at Thomas's exclamation. Why do we need someone else's children? With a, they're babies, Elizabeth answered. A kitten or a puppy is pitiful. But babies like these. At the same time, Katie stood by the basket and stared at the twins. They're so little, she murmured lovingly when she stroked the delicate heads of the animals. Changing the infants required Elizabeth to remove them from the basket. The infants eventually calmed down, but Thomas was off to the pharmacy, leaving Elizabeth with a troubling decision. Should she contact the authorities or retain the babies? First of all, it's ridiculous, I can't believe it, from one kid to three, and they're completely unrelated to our family, Thomas's daughter exclaimed with shock. Elizabeth, in contrast, spent her formative years in an orphanage. With an irritated mutter, Thomas slammed the front door shut, letting her know how bad it can go. The children have only just calmed down. So please be quiet, Elizabeth quietly answered. Elizabeth, stop doting on them like that. Thomas lost his temper. The police are going to get them. It is their problem to solve. Hold on, relax, Elizabeth calmly pleaded. Let me feed them first. In the midst of their reasoning, she made baby formula. Being logical comes easily to you. No one handed you two children by chance. Thomas, we're related, and we'll get through this. Yeah, I'm employed too. Watching Katie's joy at having twins left Elizabeth feeling lost that evening while she nursed the kids. After the kids went to bed, she went over to Thomas. A resolute, let's keep them, came out of her. I'll make sure they're healthy. 
Their unwelcome arrival into this world is devastating. I was in a similar position. Elizabeth, that's a lot of money to support all of them, Thomas moaned sadly. And I want a new car. With an assurance that, we'll manage, Elizabeth leaned in. We'll expand our family by adopting them lawfully. Plus, we're taking care of youngsters. So there are perks. Katie is clearly overjoyed to have them. If we placed them in an orphanage, she would be absolutely heartbroken. We should retain them. Thomas finally consented after considerable thought. After the necessary paperwork was taken care of, the infants were welcomed into their family as full-fledged members. Even though Elizabeth had to make certain changes, like giving up her work to be a full-time caregiver for them, they brought peace. Unfortunately, the predicted return of Evelyn for the babies never materialized. With the addition of three children, there was an increase in the frequency of chores such as feeding, walking, and doing laundry. Thomas started staying at the office later and later, and Elizabeth was fatigued by the time he got home from work. She started to suspect treachery. Elizabeth, messages from another woman were found on Thomas's phone one day when she checked it. It was a devastating blow to learn her husband was unfaithful. Elizabeth confronted him and said, You're out. I'm the one who takes care of the kids all day. What did you expect? Thomas shot back. I'm just a regular guy that needs a woman's love and attention. Where do you stand? Why haven't you taken a look at yourself recently? Never bother to change out of your pajamas, you look like a complete couch potato. The truth is that your wife, not my ex-boyfriend, gave me these children, Elizabeth grudgingly explained. Perhaps this, next one, will also deliver us a gift. Thomas stopped staying late at work after these conversations, or at least Elizabeth didn't notice anymore. Their mother-in-law Lydia dropped by their place frequently, even though she was more concerned with Katie. She made sure the twins weren't ignored. Why take on this burden? On the subject of the kids, Lydia inquired. They're great, peaceful, and healthy, Elizabeth pleaded with her. There's no problem with them. Little ones, not much trouble, Lydia remarked. And what about when they grow up? We'll make sure they're raised, Elizabeth said with assurance. We'll also have a baby together. Once these ones are a bit older, well, if you say so, Lydia responded with a hint of skepticism. A catastrophe ensued, due of concerns about a hereditary illness. Katie became quite sick and had to undergo a battery of testing and hospitalizations. The fact that Thomas was not the girl's biological father became apparent shortly afterwards. He was really taken aback. Fortunately, Katie made a speedy recovery, dispelling the doctor's suspicions, but a scandal rocked the household while she was in the hospital. Thomas made it clear that he had no desire to care for children who were not biologically his. He spoke out in a furious manner. I'm such a fool, and supposedly it's also your fault. The kids are in my pity. I'll stop now. I want to submit a statement to the proper authorities tomorrow. They ought to place all three of them in an orphanage. The news startled Katie Elizabeth. You've raised her since birth. I almost raised these two from birth, Thomas said with a hint of frustration. Yet it still doesn't imply they're getting closer to me. I long to be a parent myself. There was complete silence from Lydia, who was at her son's residence. Katie, who had been accepted as an individual, felt wronged by this. It might have been better to settle things now. Though, in the end, her son was deserving of having a family of his own. Thomas, what will become of me? Tearfully, Elizabeth inquired. They are now like family to me. They address me as, mother. Raise them if that's your desire. Thomas shot back furiously. In me, I want someone who will give me my own children. So, you've been involved with that girl, Elizabeth said, her voice betraying her confusion. She criticized Thomas, calling him a crook. I'm tired of being deceived. Anyway, I'm determined, Thomas responded with conviction. Gather your belongings and go with the kids. I shall reside here with my beloved. The divorce process will begin tomorrow. Your or the children's support is not something the court can make me do. I don't consider them family. Good attorneys will be located for me. Yeah, you're aware of it. His remarks rendered Elizabeth dumbfounded. She loved and trusted this one. Extremely severe was his demeanor. Lydia felt sorry for her son and chose to stay mute, avoiding her daughter-in-law's gaze. 
After gathering her possessions, Elizabeth dressed the boys and then summoned a cab. With no other options, Emma became her own beacon of hope. Emma invited Elizabeth to come inside and stay with her when she opened the door. I have a spare room, and we'll make space for the kids soon. Emma, I am really grateful, Elizabeth said back. Emma reassured the mother. It's nothing, when she gathered one of the infants in her purse and made her way to the room. Things will get better, you'll see. After Katie left the hospital, Elizabeth brought her to her new apartment, where her dad and grandma had disappeared to. The little girl had no idea. They've gone far away, Elizabeth falsely claimed, and they won't be coming back. What is the best way to break the news of treachery to a little kid? Particularly when it is from someone they care about the most? Time slipped away. Even though Elizabeth was a waitress at a cafe, she managed to get the twins and Katie enrolled in kindergarten. Thanks to Emma, she was able to move on with her life. Thomas kept his promise and did not help out financially after the divorce. Elizabeth was determined that she could take care of her children and grandchildren even if Lydia seemed to forget about her granddaughter in an instant. Outside the cafe, Elizabeth would sometimes see a homeless man Daniel, seated on a seat. He gazed with envy at the well-fed customers leaving the cafe. He seemed youthful but worn down by life's challenges. On occasion, he would whisper, this place smells so good, while he forced himself to control his appetite. Elizabeth ran into the kitchen and begged the cook for some meatballs, potatoes, buns, and tea because she could take it no more. Attracting the man's attention, she softly urged him to eat. He was taken aback by her friendliness, as he was used to being treated with disgust by others. It was unusual to see Elizabeth, a young woman who smiled warmly. Thank you, he murmured with appreciation, then dove headfirst into his meal, so as not to further humiliate him. Elizabeth slipped away in silence. Over time, Elizabeth established a routine of feeding him, and the two of them began to form a bond. A startling tale concerning Daniel was divulged to her. He was a prosperous chiropractor who had a family just a few years ago. Tragically, his daughter and wife were killed in a car accident one day while riding in a cab to celebrate their wedding anniversary. In an instant, his daughter was dead, and his wife, after a day on a ventilator, was dead as well. Daniel resorted to alcohol as a means of numbing the pain of losing his cherished family. He became a man on the margins after losing his job and having his flat repossessed. After his loved ones abandoned him and his friends abandoned him, he was left to fend for himself on the streets, occasionally picking up small coins. At one time, Daniel believed his life was meaningless and considered ending himself by jumping off a bridge or stepping in front of a moving vehicle. It wasn't until the cafe girl offered to help that Daniel realized he wasn't alone. Maybe the tides could turn. For some reason, Elizabeth really felt bad for him. She had successfully rented an apartment by that point, even though she was helpful. Emma still had her own life. Elizabeth once invited Daniel to her apartment so he could clean up and freshen up while the kids were at kindergarten. Though he was hesitant at first, Elizabeth was adamant. Daniel came out of the bath a changed man. He looked good despite the years of wear and tear on his face. They spent a considerable amount of time that day conversing. After that, Elizabeth suggested that Daniel remain with her. Explanation. I have three children, she said. Raising them by myself is difficult while I work. After dropping the kids off at kindergarten, I dash home to take care of washing, dinner, etc. Would that be acceptable to you? Are you not afraid to invite a stranger into your home? Daniel, what do you think? Elizabeth smiled and said, It's clear you're a good man. Consequently, they started sharing a home. The children took a shine to Daniel after they started dating and they began referring to him as, Daddy, almost immediately. It was a turning point when Daniel got well in the clinic. The parent of one of Daniel's past patients came up to him one day, and he thanked him for helping his son regain mobility through massage. Daniel had returned to work at the clinic owing to Elizabeth's efforts, and this serendipitous meeting took place there. Knowing that Daniel had battled homelessness for a number of years, the rich man was ecstatic to see his son's rescuer, since he couldn't get in touch with Daniel immediately following the tragedy. 
He sent a large amount of money to his account as a gesture of thanks. They hugged one another tightly, exchanging well wishes like old friends, while Daniel utilized the funds to launch a private clinic. Elizabeth, who was already expecting their fourth child, felt both excited and terrified by the idea. Having brought up three children without giving birth herself, her family's support was constant, no matter how difficult things got. After just a decade in business, Daniel's clinic had grown into a household name in the area. Emma had been Elizabeth's manager of her cafe for quite some time. Elizabeth watched an unusual couple, an elderly woman who appeared wealthy and a tall, slim man, visit the cafe one day as their children got older. The man noticed her uneasiness and inquired, Darling, are you comfortable? In an agitated tone, she told the server, Yes, Thomas, but you know, when she demanded freshly squeezed orange juice. In a rush, the man made the purchase. Upon this realization, Elizabeth identified him. The extent to which he had changed was astounding. Thomas, who had been her first love, was now very ungainly and had graying hair. Where's that handsome, statuesque fellow? She thought to herself. Elizabeth, he took on the appearance of a senior servant at this point. It was clear from his astonished expression that he also recognized her. While Thomas's friend ran off to get something, she remained at the pub, sitting close to the bartender. Thomas strode over to the bar. Hello, he said to Elizabeth. Your appearance has improved. You look stunning now. Does this place employ you? This is my cafe, Elizabeth said with a smile. My spouse is a well-known doctor. Our children are maturing, and life is good for us. Is that so? How about you? She inquired softly. Heavy sighing escaped Thomas. Indeed, she's quite the catch, he confessed. But don't mind her if she seems a bit grumpy. I get it. Elizabeth nodded sympathetically. Apologies, but I have to be at the soccer practice to get the kids. The coach has been very complimentary of my son's performance. Certainly, Thomas nodded in response. His tone was one of sadness. He refrained from speaking up instead choosing to observe Elizabeth's departure. Charming, youthful, accomplished, she was his ex-wife. Nothing could be reversed, which was a shame. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's story. See you next time.